Well, let's start this timer and hide it, and then let's begin. Oh, it's keyboard. I'm really dumb, so I kind of want to go on gentle, but like we're gonna go on kind. Actually, before I get, I need to turn off the uh, cat display for this game. Just for this game. I know, right? This was in my to-do list for like over a year. Oh yeah, I'll probably have to start reading off questions since I'm not displaying the chat. You're surprised that I pick up Danganronpa. Actually, no. Well, I watched the anime like a long time ago, like a very long time ago, because I didn't want to play this game. But uh, I got convinced to play it because it was around when uh, V3 came out that everyone was like, you have to play this. So I kind of know what happens in this game, but I don't remember. So please don't spoil anything. I'm going to be giving people like 24 hour bans for spoilers or perma bans, depending if they're like not even a regular. But yeah, I'm not going to do this all in one night. I'm going to do as much as I can today, though, because I know this game's over 20 hours long. Okay, the massive high school tower is over all the other buildings in this bustling urban area. Nothing's happening. Did it freeze? Oh wait, right click. Not right click? Did it freeze? Oh no. It's like the school stands at the center of the entire world. Hope's Peak Academy. It brings in top students from every field imaginable. A government-funded school of privilege. Hello, ZKJ. They say that if you come here and manage to graduate, graduate, you'll be set for life. With hundreds of years of tradition, it sends the cream of the crop into the workforce every year. It was built to raise hope in the nation's future, which makes Hope's Peak a pretty fitting name. There are two things you need to attend this school. One, you have to already be attending high school. Two, you have to be the very best at what you do. No ordinary student could enroll here. The only way in is if you're scouted by the school itself. And standing there at the gate of the ultimate school filled with the ultimate students... ...was me. Before we go any farther, I guess I should introduce myself. My name's Makoto Naegi. As you can see, I'm nothing but a hopelessly average high school student. Average on the outside, average on the inside. Hello, Savaria. I really don't have much going for me when it comes to grades, special abilities, even personality. 
I mean, yeah, I have hobbies and stuff I like to do. But it's not like I'm a psychic or mutant or whatever. Like, if you asked me what my favorite song was, or my favorite movie or TV show, they'd all just be whatever's most popular at that particular moment. Even among the average, I'm completely average. But I can't even say I'm your everyday hero type. That's just who I am. Anyway, I figure it's always good to introduce yourself right off the bat. But you know, if I have any kind of strong point, so to speak, I'd say I'm a little more gung-ho than other people. I love their uniforms. I mean, look at me. I'm completely ordinary, but still, he does not look ordinary. <laughs> Here I am, standing in front of the anything but ordinary Hope's Peak Academy. I still can't believe I'm standing here. I wonder if someone like me can survive in a place like this. Got this overwhelming presence, like it's trying to swallow me whole. But it's no wonder I, could, I would feel that way. What you have to understand is, well, let me just tell you about the preparation I did last night to get ready for today. <laughs> it's a message board. Host Peak only invites those students who are truly elite in their field. It's such a popular topic, there are threads online dedicated to talking about the school's attendees. So to prepare, I looked up some of those threads. Ultimate Pop Sensation and Baseball. And all I saw was talk about Ultimate students, who are way beyond your average high schooler. For example, one incoming student is the ultimate pop sensation. I guess she's a high school girl who's also the lead singer for a pop group famous all over the country. <laughs> There's also the ultimate baseball star! He was the cleanup hit hitter for the national high school champs. Pro teams already have their eyes on him. <laughs> then there's the ultimate fashionista. She's been on the cover of tons of fashion magazines. She's what every high school girl wants to be. Holy smokes. <laughs> Oh, and they mentioned the ultimate biker gang leader, too. The scary thing is, he's the de facto leader of every biker gang in Japan. Gangs everywhere love the guy. On top of that, there's the ultimate martial artist, the ultimate fanfic creator, the ultimate gambler, the ultimate swimming pro, the ultimate programmer, the ultimate clairvoyant, and then some. Reading that made me realize how totally powerless I was. It was the country's finest top to bottom. I felt like a tame little house cat who'd wander into a pride of lions. But still, there's something I couldn't stop thinking about. You see, there were a few students who I couldn't find any info on, no matter how much I looked. With all those ultimate students, I'm the only one without any kind of worthwhile talent. But then, what about those other new students who didn't seem to pop up anywhere? Could they be just average students like me, without any talent or anything? That thought was kind of encouraging. I mean, I know I don't have much in the way of personality. But beyond that, there's an even bigger issue. How did such an unbelievably average student like me get picked to come to this ultimate high school? I mean, I guess there is a reason. You just have to take one glance at the acceptance letter they sent me to see why. We recently held a lottery to select one ordinary student to attend our school. As a result, you have been selected, and we invite you to join us as the ultimate lucky student. They spelled it out plain as day, I got invited by pure luck. That's actually pretty impressive. Honestly, I probably would have been better off just declining their offer. But after hearing how graduating was a guarantee for success later in life, I just couldn't say no. 
but then actually actually standing there in front of the school, I started to feel lost, like I didn't belong there. I could feel myself losing my nerve. But still, I can't just stand here in front of the gate forever. Frozen in place, murmuring to myself, I looked down at the acceptance letter, clutched in my hand. It said there'd be a meeting for all incoming students in the main hall at 8 a.m. Why, why, why is everything in yellow? The meeting still isn't for a little while, but... I should probably just head in. Yeah, yeah, let's do this. I gathered up all my determination and tried to act like I'd done this a million times before. I took my first step toward the main hall. Hey, Linko. Thank you. This is where we're supposed to meet, right? I guess I'm the first one here. There's a really elegant clock over in the corner. It says it's 7.10 a.m. The meeting doesn't start until 8 o'clock, but there's still a full 50 minutes left. Makes sense nobody else would be here yet. I was so wound up. I got here way too early. I wouldn't say an hour is way too early. I have plenty of time before the meeting. Just standing around waiting isn't exactly... I should take a look around the school. Maybe that'll help me calm down a little. I am a student here now. There shouldn't be any problem with me having a look around, right? It'll help me kill some time, if nothing else. Trying to play it cool, I took my first step into Hope's Peak Academy. It was also my first step toward starting a new life at a new school. At least, that's what I was hoping for. <laughs> um, what the? But the instant I took that first step forward, my view became warped, twisted. It was like some kind of delusion, melting away and mixing together into something else. This could be a waifu killer simulator, I wouldn't know. Spinning, mixing, melting away, then spinning again. And the next moment, everything went black. That was how it all began. And how life as I knew it came to an end. At that point, I should have realized... The reason I was brought to Hope's Peak Academy wasn't because I had ultimate good luck. It was so I could experience ultimate despair. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Welcome to Despair High School! That's a lot of slots. Holy smokes. I feel like I should just, like, save in a different slot each time, because I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know how to say this word. It, mm? <laughs> oh, I was close. But what? Where am I? I woke up with my head resting on top of a hard wooden desk. My body feels... heavy. Pretty normal for me to zonk off in the middle of some boring class or whatever, but... What was I doing asleep here just now? This isn't a classroom I've ever seen, been in before. What the heck is going on? Welcome to Hope's Peak Academy. Firstly, we'd like to explain the basic controls. You can use the mouse to adjust your aim. <laughs> this is an FPS? You can aim at an object you can interact with. You can press the left mouse button. And presto, you'll investigate that object. Use the WASD button to adjust your viewpoint. Or you can press and hold the right mouse button and move the mouse around. Why don't you try looking around the classroom? Oh. Oh, is that a surveillance camera? The dangerous world we live in. I guess they have these to keep weirdos from just wandering in. Jeez, I can't believe it's already 8 o'clock. It was just after 7 when I first got here. Has it really been almost an hour since then?
There's a TV. The school is funded by the national government. So I guess it's not that weird to have TVs in here. Something feels off. I wonder what it is. It's kind of cool how you can change the perspective. What the heck? A <laughs> normal classroom. That's where a window should be. But it looks like some kind of metal plate has been bolted over it. And if I were to knock on it... Yep, definitely metal. Thick too. Very solid. Wait, that's not what matters here. More importantly, why are there metal plates o over the windows? That's the desk I fell asleep on. I can still see a line of drool. I must have left there. I'll have to clean that up later. Hey, what's that on the desk? An orientation guide? It's some kind of cheap-looking pamphlet, and there's something handwritten on it. The next semester is about to start. Starting today, this school will be your entire world. What the hell? Is this someone's idea of a joke? Okay, let's see. So what might have happened is, I got myself so wound up, I passed out in the main hall, and then someone carried me here? If that's true, it must mean... This is a classroom inside Hope's Peak! But then, if that's true... That just raises more questions. This is all really strange. I mean, those metal plates covering the windows. Like it's a prison or something. None of this makes any sense. If you mean the cutscene when the game first launches, I didn't watch that. I just skipped straight to the title menu. Because I figured it might just play after I start the game. The only thing I saw was the guy getting rocketed at the very beginning of the game. Yeah, but there's a cutscene that plays once you launch the game, and I skipped it. I didn't see anything. None of this makes any sense. I should probably head back to the main hall. It's already past the meeting time. There might be other students there now. I can leave the classroom by pressing the R key. Hold on, did I miss anything? I don't think I did. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I didn't. Why is everything pink? <laughs> A purple. It's purple. Geez, this hallway is kind of weird too. This is getting stranger by the second. I honestly have no idea what's going on. Well, for now, I'll just head to the main hall. So, I can run? Whoa. Cab key brings up a map. They have a gym. Of course, it's a high school. So, okay, I'm the blue arrow. We just came from here, I think. I'm not gonna check, I feel like, for sure. Oh my gosh. I hope I don't get motion sick playing this. The spare hotel. Check this classroom. The door's locked tight. The spare hotel? I guess it's a place for people to stay overnight. But anyway, I need to get to the main hall. Do I dare knock on his door? <laughs> I wonder where this red door leads. I'm starting to feel sick standing here. The AV room. Well, I guess it wants me to go there, but let's click on this. The AV room. It's locked. The school store. I guess it's not open. By the way, just saying, I'm really dumb, so we might get stuck in a lot of places, but please, be patient. By the time I got back to the main hall, everyone else was already there. Whoa, hey! Oh, they Another new kid? They sure look normal. <laughs> huh? 
Then you guys are all... Yeah, we're all new here. Today's supposed to be our first day of class. So, counting him, that makes 15. Seems like a good cutoff point, but I wonder if this is everyone. The ult Standing before me were the ultimate students that had been handpicked by the school. I looked around at everyone who'd gathered there, taking in their faces one at a time. Maybe I was just imagining it, but I swear I could feel a kind of aura coming from each of them. Um, how's it going? My name's Makoto Naegi. Sorry I'm late. A bunch of stuff happened, and then all of a sudden I was just... asleep. Huh? <laughs> Whoa, you too? Hmm. Things just keep getting curiouser and curiouser. Mm-hmm. So strange, I declare beyond a shadow of a doubt that this is a strange situation indeed. Um, what are you talking about? I honestly have no idea what's going on right now. Got it! <laughs> Just a moment. There's something else we must address. Listen to me! Makoto, your tardiness is unacceptable. Surely you were aware the meeting was to start at 8 a.m. sharp. To be late on your first day is unspeakable. I must report you, and you must accept your dude punishment. What? What's your problem? It's not like he wanted to be late. He didn't have any control over it. That's right! Everyone, just calm down. Listen, why don't we all go around and introduce ourselves? Huh? The hell? Now's no time for friggin' introductions. <laughs> Maybe, but it may be good to at least find out who we all are before digging into the bigger problems here. I mean, how are we even supposed to talk to each other if we do not know each other's names? Yeah. That's a good point. Um... Okay. So let's get introductions out of the way, then we can move on to whatever else. Sounds good? I'm still totally lost, but I think it's best to just focus on getting to know each other for now. So I guess this is as good as a chance as I'm gonna get. I already looked everyone up on that Hope's Peak Academy thread online, but... I still don't really know what kind of people they actually are. Time to find out. I'll start by talking to those five over there. Okay. Each conversation is important to the overall story, so keep track of how they go. I have a bad memory. <laughs> this is gonna be great. We'll talk to this intense guy. I'm Kiyotaka Ishimaru. I believe in bold simplicity. Let's work together on our educational crusade. Okay. <laughs> the ultimate moral compass. So that's Kiyotaka. According to what I saw about him on that thread, he went to a famous private school and won top honors every year. He's basically a flawless honor student. He's also known for the work he's done with his community's public morals committee. They say he respects rules above all else, earning him the title of ultimate moral compass. Anyway, you can call me Taka. You said your name was Makoto Naegi, right? <laughs> That's a good name. A strong name. You should thank your parents for giving you such an excellent name. You hear me? <laughs> and to keep that name from losing its value, you must devote yourself every single day. Got it! Life is worth putting every ounce of effort into it, right? Right. This guy is kind of annoying. <laughs> he seems mean, <laughs> just from her stance. Not that you'll remember my name anyway, but I'm T -T Toko. Toko Fukawa. The ultimate writing po prodigy. Yeah, she wrote a novel when she was 10 that got everyone talking and launched her literary career. I don't remember the first guy's name. Oh god. Ishikawa, right? And two years ago, she released So Lingers the Ocean, a love story said to be her masterpiece. The book was such a hit with every, with women that fishermen quickly shot to the top of every hottest men poll. Despite her age, she's won countless literary prizes, and all her books are instant bestsellers. Which is why she's come to be known as the ultimate writing prodigy. She seems really shy. I guess she's not as mean as she looks. 
What else would you call such a young and talented author? But I figured she'd be a lovey-dovey type, but with her masterpiece being a romance and all. <laughs> What's your problem? Oh no, she has that she has that face. What? It's not polite to stare, you know. What the heck? <laughs> okay, she is. Stop staring at me like I'm some filthy creature. But filthy creature? No, I just thought... Uh, I know what you just thought. You just thought you've n never seen such an ugly woman. You just th thought it was so funny. But no, that's not what I was thinking at all. I'm telling you! Don't bother trying to lie to me. I know it's true. Otherwise, you... I know you can't stand looking at me. Anyway... Wh whatever. I don't really care. I'm used to it. Wow. Talk about an inferiority complex. I was way off what a, about what a successful author would be like. Oh, Ishimaru. Kiyotaka. I'm not gonna remember their names. K Kiyotaka Ishimaru. Toko... Kiyo and Toko. Hi, I'm Sayaka Maizono. I look forward to getting to know you. The ultimate pop sensation. The way she moves is positively mesmerizing. That pleasant scent I can't quite place. Sayaka Maizono. When I saw her name in that thread online, frankly, I was pretty surprised. She's in a pop group famous all across the country. In fact, she's their lead singer. As the ultimate pop sensation, she's in high demand to appear on TV and in magazines everywhere. But actually, that's not the re only reason I was so surprised to find out she'd be going to this school. I'm sure she doesn't remember, but... Well, never mind. No matter how you slice it, she's really beautiful. Almost like a doll or something. I'm not a doll, you know. I'm alive. Huh? Did you hear me? I... I'm psychic. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Kidding. I just have really good intuition. He's a sharp one. Hey, um... Huh? Hey, by any chance... Now what? Huh? Yeah, it must be. I'm sure of it. Hey, Makoto did... Just hold on! Jeez, you guys! How long do you plan to waste your valuable time with this ridiculous back and forth? Sorry, I can't talk. Uh, um... But sorry, just got carried away, I guess. You hear me? Self-introductions are for introducing yourself, not bumbling through a bunch of idle chit-chat. Um... You're right. Sorry. Sorry, Makoto. We can talk about this later. It sounded like Sayaka really had something she wanted to say. But it's not like we will never see each other again. Like she said, we can talk later. Oh my gosh. How do people remember these names? Kiyo Taka Ishimaru. Toko Fuku Fu Fukawa? And Sayaka Maizono. I'm, I feel like I should only remember the fir first name. Okay, this guy has a pretty normal name. Yo, the name's Leon Kuwata. What's up? The ultimate baseball s- Oh, that's him. I recognize that name. <laughs> he played for the National High School Champs as their cleanup hitter. The ultimate baseball star. I love this image, by the way. And that superb athletic specimen is... You? Seriously? Huh? huh? What's wrong? N nothing. I'm just surprised. I figured with you being the ultimate baseball star and all. Give me a break. What? Were you expecting some kid with a shaved head? Shaved head? No, I was just expecting more of a, you know, sporty looking traditional baseball player type. I mean, when I found that article and picture of you online, that's how you looked then. <laughs> what? Oh man, you found that picture of me playing baseball? Seriously? I hate that picture. 
What the crap? This is not cool. This is so not cool. Seriously, I'm like mega embarrassed right now. I didn't have a choice, okay? Shaving your head like that is part of national championship regulations. I mean, seriously? But now I refuse to cut my hair, and I'm not gonna dye it back to normal either. Hey, listen. Actually, can I be totally honest with you? You know... <laughs> what? I don't like baseball. Like, at all. I've never gone to a single practice. He's never practiced and he was still his team's star player? He's some kind of prodigy. Yeah! And as soon as I got accepted here, I quit baseball for good. I have my own dream for the future. I like this guy. A dream? For the future? <laughs> my only path in life is getting into music. You can feel that star quality aura I have, right? You know what I mean. I'm gonna be a singer, so all I need is a songwriter and someone on guitar, and we're set. How cool is that? This new version of me that's chasing after my dream is, like, super cool to the max. I can't believe what I'm hearing. I never imagined I'd hear something like that from a baseball all-star. So far, he's my favorite out of these four. Oh my gosh. Hifumi. I am Hifumi Yamada. But if you want to call me by my nickname... The Alpha and the Omega. I don't mind. <laughs> the ultimate fanfic creator. Mm -hmm. By the way, how much do you know about the world of 2D art? World of 2D? <laughs> well, in that world, I am well known and supremely well regarded as the ultimate fanfic creator. Mm -hmm. I once sold 10,000 copies of one of my fan comics at a school festival. The event has passed into legend. Hmm. Some of them didn't get it. Of course, saying I tainted the event. How stupid can you be? That's too bad about them, but selling 10,000 copies like that is definitely pretty remarkable. However... The words of such idiots means nothing to me. I'm like Van Gogh, utterly unappreciated in my time. I'm a soldier serving night and day to destroy all mindless preconceptions about fanfiction. I'm sure if you were to observe my work, Mr. Nyagi, you would comprehend its greatness immediately. Mm -hmm. For my work is filled with deepest meaning. What? What kind of meaning? Yes, indeed. It's about embracing our basis urges. I don't think I want to comprehend it. Okay, now to talk to those five people over there. You know, like, I feel like that character is created for people to not like. Oh, I can't even see him anymore. Because, like, this is a Japanese game, right? <laughs> they don't like obesity, and they don't like, uh, gross people. And he's kind of both. So I feel like he's just created to be hated, right? Heya! I'm Aoi Asahina. But my friends just call me Hina. What's up? How am I gonna rem Wait, alright. In Japan, they use their last names first. Oh my gosh, I was, rem I was remembering their first names. How am I gonna remember their last names? The ultimate swimming pro. Aoi Asahina. She's been breaking records in every competition she's been in since elementary school. She's even been chosen as an upcoming Olympic cadet. She is, without a doubt, the ultimate swimming pro. The combination of her ability, appearance, and, um, proportions has been widely discussed online. It's being discussed right now in my chat. Mm. So, uh, what was your name again? Sorry, totally forgot. It's okay. I'm totally gonna be the same way. Makoto Naegi. <laughs> oh yeah, I knew it was something like that. No, not something like that. It is that. You got it. Sure, sure, got it. Here, I'll hammer it into my brain right now. Yeah. Makoto Naegi. Makoto Naegi. She's just like me. Oh no. She just kept repeating my name and moving her finger across her palm like she was writing something. What are you doing? Huh? You don't know? If you want to remember someone's name, you gotta write it on your hand three times. Is that what I have to do? 
I've never heard of that before in my life. Hey, by the way, how do you spell your last name? Spell it exactly like it sounds. Um... Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> I'll just figure it out later and write it down. Okay. Anyway, glad to meet ya. So... <laughs> sure, same here. Well, one thing I learned is she's totally easygoing and bursting with energy. She's the airhead. She's like me. Hello, nice to meet you. I'm Chihiro Fujisaki. Ultimate programmer. I would not expect that. Sorry, I get kind of embarrassed whenever I introduce myself like this. <laughs> anyway, I hope we can get along. Same here. Nice to meet you. Huh? Maybe it's just my imagination, but have we met before? Um, I don't think so. We just met for the first time. Which is why I said nice to meet you. Uh, I'm sorry. Y you don't have to apologize for that. Oh no. Yeah. Hiro Fujisaki is known for all the cutting edge programs she's created. She's the ultimate programmer. She's also got that timid little bunny type thing going, which has endeared her to her legion of fans. Um. Hey, so listen. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh no. Huh? What are you apologizing for now? Um. Well, just cause you seem upset. You must be mad at me, right? I know so many people like this, oh no. No, not at all. I was just lost in thought about something. Huh? Lost in thought? Yeah, it had nothing to do with me being upset or anything. Thank you. Oh, that's good. I was afraid maybe you didn't like me. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm starting to understand why her fans are so into her. I've seen this girl so many times, by the way. Um, can I ask you your name? My name is Kyoko Kirigiri. Oh no, she has that voice actress. Wait, you can't say best waifu for two girls. I'm calling you out. <laughs> The ultimate question mark. I actually know what it is, but I'm not gonna say. She's pretty tight-lipped, huh? Oh, but you know? Her name didn't show up anywhere in that Hope Speak Academy thread. I did see that there were students like me. Ones who didn't have any real identity or presence. Could this girl be one of them? Um, so, what are you doing at the school? What? What's that supposed to mean? No, I just meant getting invited here means you're some kind of ultimate something, right? So what ultimate something are you? That doesn't matter. <laughs> Why should I tell you? Huh? Well, I guess you don't have to tell me. <sighs> no, I don't have to tell you, so I'm not going to. Nothing about her turned up online, so I was thinking maybe she got picked up by chance, like me, but... Her face is like an iron mask. If she doesn't want to tell me anything, no point in asking. Yoko, Kirigiri... Saki. Oh my gosh. Hi! I'm Junko Enoshima. Charmed, I'm sure. The ultimate fashionista. Anybody would recognize this one. She's got more charm and presence than any high school girl in the country. She's the ultimate fashionista. I've seen her on tons of magazine covers, but... I feel like that doesn't quite match up to reality. What? Huh? Come on. Oh, are you talking about my cover photos and junk? <laughs> Well, of course. 
Those are totally photoshopped. Photoshopped? <laughs> yeah, you know, edited to hell and back with, like, computers and junk. Oh, so they aren't real. What can we do? Come on, don't act so surprised. You're gonna make me all depressed. Totally! Oh, she's Meryl? <laughs> it's totally normal these days to Photoshop the crap out of cover photos. You're surprised by that. You'd be totally blown away by a certain dangerous little diva of ours. <laughs> they make the eyes and junk super big and tweak the skin so it looks all ceramic and porcelain. Oh. So many dreams are getting crushed today. Oh my gosh, the main character's a perv. Oh, his name's name... Mondo Awada. Nice to fucking meet you. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> The ultimate biker gang leader. Mondo Wada, huh? Which means... He's the current leader of the largest biker gang in Japan. I'm just gonna call him Kuwabara. He's just Kuwabara. Because he has his hair. He's earned a respect, even awe, from every biker gang in the country. He's the ultimate biker gang leader. I'm sorry, but uh, Kuwabara came before Josuke. Actually, I don't know. Because JoJo's has been, like in comics forever. Kobar is my first, though. Um, nice to meet you, too. Yo. Hell yeah. <laughs> I'd better be careful around him. One wrong word, and I could wake up at the bottom of the sea. Those four over there are the only ones left. There's so many characters. Oh my gosh. I think this is going to be my favorite character. Oh, Sparkled on. I am Sakura Ogami. This is my favorite. This is automatically my favorite. The ultimate martial artist. Oh geez, I almost asked her if she was a guy. This is my favorite. Period. I don't care what characters come after or before, this is my favorite character. The day I say something like that out loud is the day I get turned into a human meatball. And now I remember, she competed in a martial arts tournament in America and won, despite being a girl. She's the ultimate martial artist. She's fought in over 400 matches and never lost a single one. She's the best. That thread also said a bit more about her. Some call her Ogre? That's kind of messed up. Some even think she's the closest known relative to the primates. The famed Missing Link. What the heck, man? Any incoming host speak students who are reading this, let me warn you right now. If you value your life, avoid her at all costs. Are you kidding? I would be like best friends with her. Standing in front of her now, I don't think they were exaggerating about that. Hey. Hey, you. Huh? Y yes? I snapped to attention without even realizing it. Then she started to poke and prod at my body. Um, what are you? I see. Muscular quality and quantity is right around that of an extremely ordinary high school student. Hmm. What a shame. You're not at all fit to act as my training partner. Oh. I'm not sure that's such a shame for me. Dude, how awesome would it be to work out with her? Name's Byakuya Togami. Oh no. I, I recognize this voice actor. The ultimate affluent progeny? He's just rich? Hi, uh, nice to meet you. That's the most half-assed introduction I've ever heard. But there isn't really anything I can do about it. Even among the ultimate students, this one is special. Yakuya Togami. He's the heir apparent of his family's massive financial conglomerate. He's already started managing business operations and his own personal assets are, well, vast. His title of ultimate affluent progeny is completely accurate. He's the definition of exceptional. That's everything I learned about him from that Hope Speak Academy thread online. Come on. We're done with introductions, right? How much longer are you going to stand there? 
Go away. I'm sick of looking at you. You know, I hate people like this. I know a lot of them in person. His aura says to me, you and I will never stand on the same level. Like a king in training. I'm Yasuhiro Hagakure. Hero for short. Take it easy, yeah? I know I will. The ultimate clairvoyant? Yasuhiro Hagakure, known as Supernova in the psychic community, the trend-setting ultimate clairvoyant. I would never trust this guy, by the way. Honestly, I don't really get all that fortune-telling stuff. It's pretty much beyond me. Still, I can't help wondering if there's any truth to it. You can't trust someone whose hair is like a sea urchin. It's like the bottom line. Could it be? Ah, uh, okay. I give up. Huh? What happened? For serious. I saw. <laughs> For serious. <laughs> I saw it. I looked right at it. Seriously, I totally saw it. Saw uh, what? Hmm. A guardian angel with a crazy perm chasing after Bigfoot running off with a skyfish in its mouth. And that guardian angel is your guardian angel. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. But hey, we should grab some brewskis sometime and get real deep into Lemuria and its civilization. What? You're not allowed to drink. We're in high school. You know? Oh, I'm actually 21. I've been held back a few times, see? And, well, it's a long story. A few times? Yeah, I bet that is a long story. I like this guy, but I don't think I could trust this guy. I do not think we have been introduced. I am Celestia Ludenburg. Oh, she actually has an accent. The ultimate gambler. Celestia Luden... huh? <laughs> Ludenburg. It is my name, but if you don't mind, I would prefer for you to call me Celeste, like that game we just beat. Um, you are Japanese, right? Huh? Of course. Why do you ask? If you don't mind, could you tell me your real name? <laughs> I don't know what you are talking about. Celestia Ludenberg is my real name. But as I mentioned, I would much rather you call me Celeste. She's polite, but pretty forceful at the same time. I don't think she wants to say any more about it. Hello, Shu. I guess the rumors in that thread were right about her. The self... Hold on, I'm reading the, the board. No, it's the same message board thingy. The self-styled Celestia Ludenberg. She's the ultimate gambler who's never lost a bet. Other than her obvious love of gothic Lolita clothes, everything about her is wrapped in a veil of lies. They say she entered and won an underground gambling tournament, earning the title Queen of Liars. She totally cleaned out the other players, taking their life savings and laughing as she did it. <laughs> I look forward to getting to know you better. She has that... spike thingy on her finger. <laughs> I automatically don't trust this girl. That smile is beyond deceptive. I'd better watch myself around her. And with that, all the introductions are done. Hmm. Even though they're all ultimate, they each have their own individual sort of... um... something. Hmm. Okay, time to get down to business. This is no time to stand around making friends like a bunch of dull-eyed baboons. Oh, that's true. I think someone said something about a bigger problem or something. What was that about? Um, listen. Well, you see... Uh, um... Makoto, you said a bunch of stuff happened and then you were just asleep, right? Well, the same is true for all of us. What? Seriously? I mean, seriously? Just after each of us got to the main hall, we lost consciousness. And when we came to, we were somewhere here in the school. That's what happened to you, right? But... That's just... weird. That every one of us would get knocked out like that? Piece of shit! <laughs> exactly. That's why we're all freaking out. <clears throat> that's not the only thing. 
You saw where all the windows in the classes and hallways were, right? I would trust this guy. Because he's all about moral compass, right? When store, instead of normal glass windows, it was a bunch of big metal plates. What's that about? Are you for real? Plus, all my stuff's missing. Even my cell phone. Um... Yeah, you're right. I haven't seen my PDA anywhere, either. <clears throat> and then, there's the main hall to here. The front exit is completely blocked by some giant metal hatch. What does this mean? But there wasn't anything like that when I first got here. Is that a gun turret? What the heck? What's it doing there? Aww. Maybe we got caught up in some kind of, like, you know, crime or something? Is it, like... <laughs> what, like, a kidnapping? You think maybe someone grabbed us and hauled us off and we're not actually at school? Okay, this is my second favorite character. First is Sakura. Okay, Kuwata. Kuwata. I need to remember his name. Leon Kuwata. I remember Leon. I can't remember the Kuwata. Hey, come on. Come on, don't think like that. Cheer up. I bet this is all just part of the school's orientation procedure. You know? I'm sure that's it, so I'm just gonna take it easy for a little bit. I see. Oh, so you think they want to do us want to do something to surprise us? What the hell? Huh. Well if that's all it is, it's nap time for me. You know what I mean. I was up way too late last night. But I could use a little shut eye. I could feel everyone's tension evaporating. But then, it began. Ahem, ahem, testing, testing! Mic check, one, two, this is a test of the school broadcast system! Am I on? Can everyone hear me? Okay, well then! The voice seemed totally out of place. It was so playful, so completely unconcerned. I couldn't help but feel a deep, unnerving dread at the sound of it. It was like hearing someone laugh at the scene of an accident. Uh, to all incoming students, I would like to begin the entrance ceremony at... right now! Please make your way to the gymnasium at your earliest convenience. That's all. I'll be waiting. Huh? What the hell was that just now? Goodbye. Well then, if you'll excuse me. Hey! Hey, what, you're gonna take off just like that? Could it be? Oh, yeah, now I get it. This whole thing was just to get us all pumped for the entrance ceremony. <laughs> Man, thank god it was all a joke. I'd be totally freaked if this was real. You know? Alright, guess I'll head out too. Wonder what they got planned for us next. Huh, uh... Damn, I was totally looking forward to that nap too. Why'd they have to go and kill the mood? Huh? Oh, wait for me, I want to go with you. <laughs> That is that, then. I'll see you all there. Anyway... N not that anyone cares, but uh, I'm gonna go too. Everyone took off for the gym, but I was frozen where I stood. That uneasy feeling I'd had before? I couldn't get it out of my mind. And it looked like I wasn't the only one. Uh, um... This... this doesn't seem right. This is bad. Yeah, that announcement was totally weird. However... Maybe, but just staying put doesn't mean we'll be safe. Besides, aren't you guys just a little bit curious to find out what's going on around here? I see. We do not move forward, we learn nothing. The only choice is to push ahead. Uh, I guess she's right. This is the best character, by the way. But still, I'm kinda, no, really nervous. We don't have a choice, we have to go. They said to go to the gym, right? I think I should start saving these in alternate slots just because I feel like the choices that I make 
are gonna actually affect the story. Let's, let's just do that. I can still talk to everybody. Oh, I can investigate this thing. That surveillance camera has what looks like a gun attached to it. But there's no way that's a real gun, right? Holy cow, what's with this huge metal hatch? It looks like the kind of thing you'd see in a secret military base or something. This is the same main hall I was in before, right? This door definitely wasn't here then, though. Same thing? Yeah. Wait, I can still talk to everybody, though. Except for the people that walked away. This is bad. What was with that announcement? It was, like, totally creepy. <laughs> Shit. What the hell kind of game are they playing? What, what the hell? Is this some kind of bad joke? I actually trust this guy. And I feel like I trust this guy because he would have nothing to lose. Uh, um. Something weird is going on here, right? It's not just me. I don't trust these two. <laughs> I don't trust this person. I don't- I trust her, I don't trust this guy. I like only trust like four people. Huh. True. If we do not move forward, we learn nothing. The only choice is to push ahead. Well... Are you okay? Is everyone okay? I don't remember if I talked to Blue Haired Girl. Uh, um... Oh wait, I did. Listen. I know how you feel, but all we can do now is check it out, right? Okay, uh, exit. Actually, let's, what's this? The commsat thingy. This is TV. School is funded by the national government. I guess it's not that weird to have TVs in here. Something feels off. I wonder what it is. Can't check the trophies? Hi. Oh, I feel like I'm gonna screw up. <laughs> to the gymnasium. Let's just go straight there. Because I'm sure everything's locked. Yeah. Let's run. Is that a sword? Hey, come on. God. I had no idea this Hope's Peak Academy place was going to be such a pain in my balls. It really ain't that much different from the time I spent in Juvie. Hell, this place is even worse. Uh, um. And why isn't there anyone here? Walking through the halls, I didn't see a single person. This is bad. Isn't that, like, seriously not good? <gasps> They're just trying to spook us. They'll take those metal plates down later. I'm sure of it. All we can do now is hope for the best and prepare for the worst. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Ugh, shit. Well, it ain't like I'm scared or nothing. Let's just get this over with. Hey, damn it. Hey, where's whoever called us here? What are you thinking? Mondo, stop. No running. Well, then. I too shall go. <laughs> okay, he's just the worst. Hey, wait. Don't leave me here all alone. Okay, time for more tutorial action! I can press the tab key to observe the room I'm in. Observing will display what people and objects I can interact with. Sorry for the late notice. That's really loud. Oh my gosh. What? A display case. There are all kinds of trophies and pl plaques inside. Of course, all the students who go here are ultimate, right? This is probably just a tiny fraction of all their awards. Louie, you think it's bad? Mine's is on like... I have it at reduced audio for you guys. I'm hearing it in its full glory. Total silence. For whatever reason, she's the only one managing to stay calm. Or maybe I'm just imagining that. Um... Where are all the other students? Why are we the only ones here? You yell at me? Unbelievable. This is bad. I'm totally getting a bad vibe right now. 
Another surveillance camera. I feel like we're being watched every second. I don't like it. School has a lot of TVs. They couldn't all just be for that weird school broadcast, could they? I, I need to do it one more time. Oh my gosh. Still filled with uneasy dread. I did what the announcement said and went to the gym. I saw what was waiting for us there. Oh, it really does look like an entrance ceremony. Yo! See, told ya, it's totally normal entrance ceremony stuff. Hero was right. But in a way, that just emphasized how completely not normal all of us were. Hey there! Howdy! Hello! Is everyone here? Good! Then let's get things rolling! Huh? A teddy bear? I'm not a teddy bear. I am Monokuma! Oh boy. And I am this school's headmaster! It was the strangest thing I'd ever seen. Right before my eyes, it was... What I was seeing was... It was... Utterly incomprehensible. Nice to meet you all. Such a bright voice and carefree attitude was completely out of place. All that anxiety I'd been carrying with me suddenly transformed into outright fear. Say what? That teddy bear can talk. <gasps> Calm down. I'm sure there's just a speaker inside of it. Hey, come on now. I told you already, I'm not a teddy bear. Headmaster. Oh man. I'm Monokuma, and I'm your headmaster. Say what? It moved. Dude, shit. Seriously, man. Calm down. It's probably just a remote control toy or something. How dare you compare me to a child's plaything? You've cut me deep. Deeper than the, Mar the Mariana Trench. <laughs> My remote control system is so complex, even the folks at NASA can't recreate or even comprehend it. Bear it! Ah, but don't make me say stuff that might destroy NASA's dreams. I just couldn't bear that. Well... Bear that? Really? You are... unfortunate. Hmm... Now then, moving on. We really must hurry and get started. Come on... Giving up already? No other stupid bear puns? Now then... Quiet down now, quiet down. Ah, okay, so... <laughs> He's abandoned the gag. Good morning! Everyone stand at attention and bow, and good morning. You hear me? Good morning! What's your problem? You, you don't have to say it back. Now then. Let us commence with a most noteworthy and memorable entrance ceremony. First, let's talk a bit about what your school life here will be like. Now, uh, make no respect, you few students so full of potential represent the hope of the world. To protect such splendid hope, you'll all live a communal life together solely within the confines of the school. Everyone will live in harmony together and adhere to the rules and regulations of the school. Huh? Ah, now then, regarding the end date for this communal life... Too bad. There isn't one! In other words, you'll all be here until the day you die. Such is the school life you've been assigned. <laughs> but what did he say? Until the day we d die Yep. Oh, but fear not. You have quite an abundant budget, so you won't lack for all the common conveniences. Uh, hold on a second. That's the least of our worries right now. Yeah, what the hell? You're saying I have to live here forever? You're screwing with us, right? It's true. I'm not screwing with you. I'm no liar. Of that, you can be 100% sure. 
Uh-huh. Oh, and just for your information, you're completely cut off from the outside world. So you don't have to worry about that dirty, dirty land beyond these walls ever again. Cut off? With all those metal plates all over the school? They're there to keep us trapped in here? Phew. That's exactly what they're there for. No matter how much you may yell and scream for help, help will not come. So with all that in mind, feel free to live out your life here with reckless abandon. Hey, come on! What the hell is this? I don't care if the school or whoever else is behind it all. This is just a really bad joke. D damn you! Yeah, cut it out. It isn't funny anymore. Unbelievable. You keep saying this is a lie or a joke. A bunch of skeptics, all of you. What are you gonna do? But I guess you can't help it, huh? You all grew up in an age where you're taught to doubt your neighbor. Well, you'll have plenty of time to find out whether or not what I say is true. And when that time comes, you'll see with your own eyeballs that I speak the undeniable truth. Most unfortunate. Having to live here forever would be quite the problem. What's this? Come now. What's the matter with all of you? You decided of your own free will to attend Hope's Peak Academy, didn't you? And now, before the entrance ceremony is even finished, you've already decided you want to leave? Hey, um... Oh, but you know... I guess I did forget to mention one thing. There is one way for you to leave the school. But really? Actually... As headmaster, I've crafted a special clause for those of you who would like to leave. I call it the graduation clause. Now then. Now let me tell you about this fun little rule. As I mentioned, in order to maintain an environment of harmony here, we rely on a communal lifestyle. And if someone were to disrupt that harmony, they and they alone would be allowed to leave the school. That, my students, is the graduation clause. What? What do you mean by disrupt the harmony? <laughs> well, you know... If one person were to murder another... But murder Yes, indeed! Having, strangling, bludgeoning, crushing, hacking, drowning, igniting... How you do it doesn't matter. You must kill someone if you want to leave. It's as simple as that. <laughs> the rest is up to you. Give it your all to achieve the best outcome in the worst way possible. A chill shot down my spine. You must kill someone if you want to leave. As soon as I heard those words, my blood went cold. <laughs> I bet that got your brain juices flowing. Beats the heck out of a human catching a salmon, huh? Like I said before, you guys are the hope of the world, but you know... Taking that hope and seeing it get murdered creates a darkened shadow of despair. EXTREME! I just find that so darn exciting. What the hell? Are you talking about to kill each other is it's huh? to kill each other is to kill each other? I'm sure there's a dictionary here somewhere if you need it. What are you saying? We know what it means. That's not the problem. Why do we have to kill each other? Say what? Yeah, stop blabbering on with all this nonsense. Just let us go home already. Blabbering. Blabbering, blabbering. What do you mean, blabbering? Stop blabbering on about blabbering on. You guys just don't get it, do you? Let us go, let us go. You keep on saying the same thing over and over and over and over. Listen, from this moment on, this school is your home. Your life. Your world. Got it? Yahoo! And you can kill as much as you want to kill. So go ahead. Go on a kill kill killing spree. <sighs> Alright, come on. How long are you going to keep this up? Hmm? You know? You got us, okay? You scared the hell out of us. You can go ahead and reveal the trick now. Huh? Reveal the trick? I'm right, right? Yeah, because, I mean, you know, this is all some kind of trick and all, right? So, uh, like... Duh, shit. Dude, shut the hell up and get out of my way. Stepping hero aside, Mondo placed himself in front of Monokuma, his voice rumbling like thunder. You're fucking dead. Listen up, asshole. 
this has gone way too far. What the hell kind of joke is this? What's the matter? Joke? What? You mean like your hair? You son of a bitch! <laughs> Mondo roared out, and then there was a sudden boom. It was the sound of the floorboard as he kicked off and launched himself into the air. He flew at Monokuma, fast and straight as a bullet. He locked onto his target. Gotcha, you little piece of shit! I don't know if you're a toy or a stuffed animal or whatever the hell. Either way, I'm gonna rip you to fucking shreds! What? The violence against the headmaster is in violation of school regulations! Shut the fuck up! Let me out of here, I swear to Christ! Hey, damn it! What? No smart ass comeback this time? Oh no. Piece of shit! Stop that beeping and say something. Watch out! Get rid of it. Huh? Hurry up and throw it. I don't know if her ferocity stunned him into silence or what, but without a word, he did what he was told. He threw Monokuma. As soon as he did. The hell? What the? That sure wasn't a joke. It blew the hell up. There's a painful ringing in my ears, and I could smell gunpowder. Explosions might happen all the time in movies or whatever, but when it's in real life, I've never seen anything like it. But... You know, this means that the teddy bear's been destroyed, right? Hey! I told you, I'm not a teddy bear, I'm Monokuma. There's another one? D damn you! You seriously tried to kill me just now! Of course! Well, yes, I was serious about trying to kill you. You did violate one of the school regulations, after all. I'll let you off with a warning this time, but you better be careful from now on. Any naughty boy or girl who violates my rules won't get off with just a little swat on the butt. This is bad. Hey, so does this mean there's, like, a bunch more of you around somewhere? Yep. Monokumas have been placed all throughout the school, yes. Plus, don't forget the surveillance cameras installed everywhere. And if you're caught breaking any rules, well, you all just saw what happened, right? <laughs> and I won't be so forgiving with my punishment next time, so don't let it happen again. Huh? That's not even punishment, that's just wrong. Well? Now then, lastly, to commemorate your joyous entry into our school, I have a little something for you. Ta -da! This is our official student handbook. Pretty cool, huh? As you can see, it's fully digital, so naturally we call it the e-handbook. Hmm. <laughs> yes, well, moving on. This handbook is absolutely vital to a healthy school life, so don't lose it. When you start it up, it will display your name. Always make sure you have the right one. Now this is not your everyday notebook. It has so many more uses than that. What? Also, it's completely waterproof. Splash it, wash it, drown it, it'll keep on ticking. And thanks to its space age design, it would stand an impact force of up to 10 tons. Very resistant. It contains all of our school regulations, so make sure you review them thoroughly. You guys. You'll hear me say this a lot, but any violation of school regulations will not be tolerated. Shing! Rules restrict, yes, but they also protect. Society, for example, would be utter chaos without laws. Yes, indeed! The same thing applies here, which is why it's crucial we have strict punishments in place for violators. Okay, well, that brings our entrance ceremony to a close. Bye bye Please enjoy your abundantly dreary school life, and see ya! And with that, he was gone, leaving us all in a state of shock. <laughs> so guys, how would you define what we just experienced? What the crap? How? Why? I don't understand any of this. Hmm? You have to li live here forever? Or kill? <laughs> what? What just happened? Calm down. Everyone, we, j we need to just calm down. 
First, let's take a second to summarize everything we just heard. Based on what Monokuma said, we essentially have two choices. Choice number one is that we each stay here, living a communal life together until the day we die. And the other choice is... Indeed. If we want to get out of here alive, we have to kill someone, right? That's... But killing someone, that's... <laughs> we were abducted out of nowhere and stepped into this place meant to look like a school. And now we're supposed to start killing each other? This is... This is... This is just... What is this? Ridiculous. A lie is what it is. All these ridiculous things we've heard, this all has to be fake. <laughs> right now it doesn't really matter if it's real or fake. What matters is... So in other words... Is there anyone here who's seriously considering all this? To that, nobody had a response. Keeping quiet myself, I looked around at the others. They all stared at one another, trying to gauge each other's thoughts. I can almost taste the hostility. I mean, who would answer truthfully if they're gonna plan to kill someone here? And that's when it hit me. I realized the true terror hidden within the rules Monokuma had laid out. You must kill someone if you want to leave. Those words had planted vicious thoughts deep within each of us. Each of us became suspicious of everyone else. We we're forced to wonder, is somebody going to betray us? And that was how my new school life began. The school, which had come out of nowhere to raise my hopes so high. It's not a school of hope. It's a school of despair. We beat the prologue, everybody. Oh gosh, is this gonna drop down to like two? Oh, to be continued. I received the school crest present. I just got an achievement from zero to hero. Hold on.